World War I started on the 28th of June, 1914. Although most expected it to end quickly, by Christmas of that year, German soldiers and their Allied counterparts had been in the trenches for three months. By now, the small stretch of land between them was known as No Man's Land, and no man in his right mind would venture there for fear of being shot by the enemy. Yet, in those fragile late December days, a tentative truce was called between the soldiers and the trenches, and No Man's Land became a place of peace. There are many stories recorded by men from both sides of those astonishing and bittersweet days. Welcome to Intrigued Mind, where today we will delve into five tales from the trenches. The 1914 Christmas Truce of World War I World War I was fought using trench warfare. These trenches where soldiers lived, slept, fought, and died stretched 475 miles across what was known as the Western Front, from the English Channel to the Swiss Alps. The first trenches of World War I were dug on the 15th of September, 1914, after the Battle of the Marne. Both sides recognized that combat was going to be bloodier, more drawn out, and less decisive than they first thought. So, they got to digging. Trenches were generally dug out in three rows. The first row was the front line. Protected by barbed wire, it could be anywhere from 50 yards to one mile from the opponent's trenches. The second trench, called the support trench, was several hundred yards behind the front line. The third trench was several hundred yards behind the second, and this trench was called the reserve trench. Trenches were not dug out in straight lines to prevent the enemy from starting fires that would quickly sweep right through them. Rather, they zigzagged every couple of yards. Trenches afforded protection for the soldiers within from machine gun fire. Trenches were used for firing at the enemy as a communication hub or for spying on the enemy, depending on its position. Life in the trenches was miserable for the soldiers, where they spent weeks at a time. The trenches were wet, muddy, disease-ridden, and full of rats. Dysentery, cholera, and typhoid fever were rife. Some soldiers succumbed to gangrene after long periods of time spent standing in water and mud. Known as trench foot, sometimes the only solution was to amputate the gangrenous limb. The soldiers lived on army rations of tinned beef and hard biscuits. Amazingly, soldiers were still able to receive care packages from loved ones at home. Letters, photographs, luxury items like candy, cake, cigarettes, and grooming tools such as combs and razors were gratefully received. It was these items that helped to facilitate the Christmas truce. Soldiers presented them as gifts to the enemy as a sign of peace and goodwill. When you consider the hellish existence that the soldiers led, living and fighting in the trenches, it does help us to understand why an informal truce was called between the German soldiers and the Allies in December of 1914, and how they were able to come together to celebrate Christmas like old friends. It seems astonishing that these bitter rivals could lay down their weapons for a few days, but it did happen. After the inconclusive First Battle of Ypres, ammunition supplies had run low, which led to a ceasefire. Both sides needed time to regroup and strategize. In the weeks leading up to Christmas, soldiers had started to venture out of the trenches all along the Western Front, meeting their enemies in no man's land to talk and to exchange season's greetings. Some sources say that the Germans called out first, telling the Allies that they would be unharmed if they came out of their trenches. One English soldier reported that a German soldier had shouted, We are Saxons, you are Anglo-Saxons. What is there for us to fight about? Historians believe that it was mostly British soldiers who made peace with the Germans, and that the Christmas truce spread across approximately two-thirds of the Western Front, mostly situated around Belgium. Many of the heartwarming stories of this historic event were recorded by British, French, and German soldiers. Here are five of the best. Number 1. Private Henry Williamson of the London Rifle Brigade Williamson had just turned 19 years old when he wrote a letter to his mother on Boxing Day, 1914, about the Christmas truce. He started his letter by saying that he was smoking German tobacco in an English pipe. He then explained how this came about, writing, Yesterday, the British and Germans met and shook hands in the grounds between the trenches, and exchanged souvenirs and shook hands. Yes, all day. Christmas Day. Marvelous, isn't it? In his letter, Williamson describes the events of the previous night, Christmas Eve. Both armies sang carols and cheered, and then had a burial service in the afternoon for the dead soldiers. Henry Williamson survived World War I, returned to England, and served his country again in World War II. He went on to become an author and died at the ripe old age of 81. Number 2. Private Merker of the Scots Guard The war diary of a Scottish soldier, one Private Merker, recorded that he met a German patrol and was given a glass of whiskey and some cigars, and a message was sent back saying that if we didn't fire at them, they would not fire at us. In Britain, 
The charitable efforts of the Princess Mary Appeal ensured that their soldiers in the trenches received parcels for Christmas. Similarly, German soldiers were the recipients of Christmas parcels from government and private organizations and individuals. It was these parcels from home that made Private Merker's gift of a cigar and whiskey possible. The willingness on both sides to share these luxury goods, despite the privations each had endured since the war started, is an incredible example of the goodwill that existed in that time and place. Number 3. Captain Clifton Stockwell of the Royal Welsh Fusiliers Captain Clifton English Stockwell was serving on the Belgian border during the Christmas of 1914. Stockwell is credited with agreeing to a day-long Christmas truce with German officer Baron Maximilian von Sinner. The pair shared a Christmas beer together and toasted each other's good health. An impromptu game of football kicked off, and the two officers smoked cigars and showed each other photographs of their loved ones back home whilst they watched the match. 100 years later, the grandsons of Stockwell and von Sinner, both of whom had careers in the military, met at the very same spot in Belgium to commemorate the peace brokered by their grandfathers and to drink a beer in their memory. Number 4. Lieutenant Johannes Niemann of the 133rd Saxon Regiment In 1960, Niemann gave an interview in which he recounted what happened on that misty Christmas morning in 1914. He described looking through his binoculars from his trench to see the incredible sight of our soldiers exchanging cigarettes, schnapps, and chocolate with the enemy. Later, a Scottish soldier appeared with a football, which seemed to come from nowhere, and a few minutes later, a real football match got underway. Niemann also explained how funny it was to the Germans to see that the Scottish men wore nothing beneath their kilts, especially when the wind blew. Number 5. Richard Sherman of a German Regiment Richard Sherman was a teacher in his native Germany before war broke out. He was stationed near the border between eastern France and Germany. One full year after the Christmas truce, Sherman wrote, When the Christmas bell sounded in the villages, something fantastically unmilitary occurred. German and French troops spontaneously made peace and ceased hostilities. They visited each other through disused trench tunnels and exchanged wine, cognac, and cigarettes for black bread, biscuits, and ham. This suited them so well that they remained good friends even after Christmas was over. So moved was Sherman to see how thoughtful young people could be that in 1919 he founded the very first youth hostel. Sadly, this peace could not last and soldiers on both sides were ordered to continue fighting after the Christmas truce of 1914. News of this incredibly poignant moment in human history reached the public one week later, when the New York Times published a story about the Christmas truce on the 31st of December, 1914. Author Tony Ashworth wrote in his 1980 book, Trench Warfare, The Live and Let Live System, that the Christmas truce was less to do with a sentimental, romanticized idea of peace, and more to do with the men trying to take control of a situation in which they had little to no say. By laying down their weapons and celebrating Christmas with their enemies, these soldiers were sending a message to the powers that be that they had decided that they did not agree with the war that they were caught in the middle of and to try and restore some of their humanity. Unfortunately, in the years that followed the Christmas truce of 1914, soldiers were explicitly prohibited to engage in further acts of peace by their superiors and the machine of war trudged mercilessly ahead for the next five years. In the muddied and blood-soaked trenches of the Western Front, the Christmas Truce of 1914 was one of those precious moments during World War I when the goodness of humanity shone through, giving those brave soldiers a brief respite from the horrors of war and a glimmer of hope that peace was possible. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel like the video and leave your suggestions in the comments below.